afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Vermont's fair and field day season is underway. It's a time to celebrate our state's agricultural heritage and to enjoy everything from live entertainment and children's activities to Vermont crafts and exhibitions. One aspect of our fairs and field days that's growing in popularity is homegrown contests. We've all been in awe at seeing things like the giant pumpkins that are grown around the state. Equally popular are the flower contests. As you get ready to prepare your flowers for the fair, there are some things you need to keep in mind. So we've called on UVM Extension horticulturalist Leonard Perry and some other flower judges to give us some tips on what it takes to bring home the blue ribbon. Here's Leonard. It's really easy to enter flowers at the fair. You don't really have to have a green thumb to do it. And it's a good chance you may win some ribbons, as long as you know a few tips about uh, the proper care of cut flowers. One of the first things you want to do is cut early in the morning when the plants are hydrated, they have plenty of water in them. If it hasn't rained, if they are dry, you can't cut in the morning, you want to make sure you water them real well and then leave them a few hours so they can get that water up in the plant so they're nice and turgid. Then you want to cut them at the right stage. If you cut them uh, too far along, they'll be faded when they come in. Um, and one of the things that we judges look for is if a flower is kind of unusual and maybe the only one, we, you know, get cut a little more slack where there's something that's real common like zinnias or sunflowers, tend to be a little bit more picky. And here's a good example of a sunflower that's not quite as uniform. It's still very beautiful. It's kind of a different color, but you see all the stamens, the little flower parts aren't quite open here, whereas the one right over next to it here is almost perfectly uniform all the way around. That, I think, would be a blue uh, ribbon winner right there. So stage of cutting, making sure they're nice and uniform is one of the key things. Of course, when you cut, you want to get them right in water. Uh, even better is a flower preservative. If you can get some at a local florist, they have little packets, very inexpensive. That really will help uh, keep the flowers a lot longer. Put them in cool as soon as you can. If it's not in shade, a cool part of the house, just get them out of the sun. They'll last a lot longer and won't wilt uh, that way. One of the things you definitely don't want to do and most people are pretty good about this, but is keep those leaves out of the water. Those will rot, organisms will form, that'll clog those um, vessels of the plant. And here's an example of one that's almost on the edge here. This is a marigold. And you can see the leaves here. Some of the leaves are in the water. It'd uh, be better to uh, take those off, especially if the leaves are bad, and that's one of the things we're looking for. Uh, some of uh, the plants will have leaves, like the big blooms, like the sunflowers. Um, some people have taken them off, so you know if there's a problem, we can't see it, we can't judge it. But if the leaves are on and there's some insect chewing or damage, well, we have to look at that, and that can detract. Even though the flower may be perfect, you know we really look for insect disease damage. So. Uh, keep the leaves out of the water. Uh, that's one of the real big things. If you don't remember too much else, that's one of the real big ones. Now, if we walk down here, there's a couple of other things uh, we need to show you about how to pick these flowers. Of course, as I mentioned, uh, picking at the right stage is uh, very important. Uh, here are some cone flowers, and if you um, these are the typical purple ones. There are just many out there. A lot of times, if you can, if you have any of the more unusual ones, there are just so many colors of these. Bring some of those in. Those are really bound to do pretty well. But you can see here are some different stages. These are picked pretty well uh, uh, with a traditional purple cone flowers. The petals kind of go out when they get older. They kind of drop down or reflex, as it's called. And then, of course, this one here, uh, these were maybe out of water too long. They really just totally wilted. They never revived. So that's a real problem, and obviously that probably won't get a ribbon. It's too bad, because um, otherwise it would have been nice flowers. And then right next to it is another good stage of a couple of, not only the flowers, but a couple things. These are hosta flowers, you know, a plant that's not usually grown for flowers. But you see this one, very nice stage of opening, just some of the first flowers starting to open, a lot of good buds. The one next to it, pretty much gone by some of the last flowers opening. So this is not nearly as good uh, as this one. The other thing to watch for is read the directions. Um, it calls for one stem, these have one stem, this one has two stems. So I didn't read the directions, so unfortunately that one will probably be disqualified because you can't really uh, compare two stems to one stem. So if nothing else to make sure you follow the, the directions. So once you have the cut flowers, you brought them in, they're in good shape. Um, you can also arrange with them. Let's go take a look at some uh, good examples of arrangements. 
So once you have the flowers, um, you can arrange them. Now you can be real elaborate, it can be very simple. Um, there are many examples of both. It can be very creative, like someone has done here. They've taken, a, in using all kinds of containers, they've taken a, looks like a wire bicycle, covered it with moss, and wrapped it with the sphagnum moss, and used the coneflower heads off of coneflower. So think of all the plant parts you might use here, the bicycle. They've carried that forward through in the arrangement. So a nice continuity there. Uh, great colors, the orange uh, cosmos and some marigolds against, and Rebecca in the middle there, against this uh, nice green moss bed. Um, unfortunately, we're talking freshness later. Some of these cosmos, they're real tough sometimes to keep fresh. They've gone by, so that really detracts a bit. Also, I might like to see it just a little bit higher. It seems kind of squat. One of the good things, though, and one of the main things you want to do, though, is uh, cover the foam. Um, usually, you put these in florist foam, which is something you get at a florist. It absorbs lots of water. That's what they use for uh, cut flowers. That's what you use. But make sure that's covered up. That's one of the things we look for as judges, not to see any of the uh, stuff that we shouldn't see, if you will, like the foam. They've done that with the sedum here. Just very nice. Um, so and moving over, very different type of arrangement here, just a vase, a beautiful blue vase with some nice contrasting colors in it. Kind of a fall arrangement. Could be shades of one color. Uh, they have turtle head. They have uh, Joe Pye. They have some hydrangeas, which even though they're fading, may not be uh, great necessarily over as a cut flower, but in this arrangement, it really, that pink picks up with these colors, works well. And having a nice uh, balance going around, so you have things coming out all around. You don't have all one flower on this side and all of one on there. You have it evenly spaced. Start with some of the big flowers and then fill in with some of the smaller ones. Um, some great grasses here for texture and the sea oats. Um, one of the things, that, and some nice of the purple, something different, you don't see often the leaves of the purple bugbane, some misophuga, but unfortunately, again, the freshness. Some of these have gone by right in the front, so that's going to detract a little bit, but still, overall, very nice arrangement. Now, there are many different types of uh, arrangements you can do in classes. Um, you can find those in the handbook. Uh, miniatures are one of my favorite. They're just so lovely. Some are just so small, and I love this one with the little white Queen, Queen Anne's lace and little blue flowers. It goes with the blue and the white there on the cup. Just a lovely little thing. Um, this is a little bit larger and more open. This lovely little swan. Um, that's a very nice one, I think, with the ageranium in it. Um, this one has um, is lovely in a sense, but it's kind of like a pin cushion. It's really short. Uh, it needs to be in proportion, any of these arrangements, to the uh, container. This one's pretty big, and the flowers should probably be, again, you know, half or twice as high to have a little bit more proportion. But again, as with the cut flowers, read the directions. If it says three inches high, you want to make sure they're three inches high. So um, we actually use a tape measure on some of these just to make sure they uh, follow the directions. <laughs> Leonard and I have been judging for about 19 years now. And some of the things I'm looking for in an arrangement as a judge, um, I'll start with this one here in a clear glass container with water. First and foremost, I'm looking for quality of the flower. I want to see blemish free, no insect damage, nice, uh, cut at just the right time. Secondly, I don't want to see any foliage in the water. It has to be clean. That way the arrangement lasts longer and it looks a lot nicer. This is really a really nice example of what we're looking for. The composition is beautiful. Uh, there's a proportion with the container. You look at how big the container is, how tall the arrangement. Um, some of these are placed deep in for nice depth. It draws your eye in. Nice colors. Uh, this one is actually the category was uh, shades of one color. And this is executed beautifully. This up here, um, I think it's a harvest category, and it's absolutely, again, just lovely. The arrangement complements the container perfectly. Um, if you look closely, she, has, uh, she or he has some incredible elements in here uh, with the caps of the acorn, just adds a lot of interest and texture, and the colors are just lovely and really evokes a, a fall arrangement. These are two examples of some really nice entries that we've gotten.
a lot of times people come in and they wonder why they didn't get a blue. And uh, the comments will, we try to be really constructive. Here's what we were looking for. Here's maybe what was missing. Um, that, that the flowers were wilted when we saw them and that's kind of tough. We just can't give a blue to, with wilted flowers. So we're trying to um, educate people so that they know what, what we're looking for and what anybody would be looking for in a, in a good arrangement. And actually over the years I've seen the quality really creep up and I hope that maybe that was uh, had something to do with our comments. Um, but the quality has just been exceptional at the fair. Some of these could be professional arrangements. They're lovely, really, really nice. Yeah, perfect. This is a blue. That okay. is. Carol? Yeah, I agree. So, as you can see, it's really pretty easy to enter flowers in the fair, whether it be arrangements or cut flowers. Just make sure you follow the directions. They can be found in the handbook, which you can get from the fair. You can get it online. If you have any questions, just call the number of the superintendent there. Now, Patty and I got a lot more to judge here. Okay, Patty, what about this one? That looks beautiful. That's Tell you, blue. I love it. Well, we're also going to catch up with Leonard for our next segment. When it comes to lawn care, we all want our lawns to look good, with a minimal amount of work and impact on the environment. So Leonard sat down with a master groundskeeper at Fenway Park in Boston for some tips on how you can care for your lawn, just like the pros. Most homeowners have at least some lawn. Now, if you're having problems keeping it looking good or just wonder how professionals at ballparks and golf courses keep it looking so green, then we have a book for you. The Lawn Bible, How to Keep It Green, Groomed, and Growing Every Season of the Year was written by Master Groundskeeper at Fenway Park in Boston, David Miller. Well, David, you've spent your career at professional parks maintaining turf grass at a very high level. What inspired you to write a book on home lawns? Well, you know, many of the same challenges I face here, homeowners are facing across the United States and, and New England. And so I think there's a lot of things that we can learn from each other and a lot of simple tips that are in the book that they can improve their own lawn and, and caring for to make sure that they're not only helping their own lawn, home lawn, but they're helping the environment. They're watering at the proper time of day. You know, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. is the best time to water versus coming home after a hot day and turning on the sprinkler when they get home from work letting that grass sit wet all night, then the grass will get sick with disease, to mowing at the proper height. Too many people mow sh too short, and so we want them to mow two and a half to three and a half inches high. So that length of the grass blade helps shade the roots, so it makes sure that you're not using any more water than you have to. We talk about fertility. You know, uh, have a soil test done. Uh, contact your county extension agent and have a soil test done to find out really what you need and what you don't need. So you're not just arbitrarily going out there and, and putting chemicals on your lawn if you don't need it. But you do need to feed your lawn. It's important to have a healthy lawn that's actively growing so it can help heal itself and that it can also uh, uh, fill in the thin areas. Because if you get those thin areas and you're not feeding your lawn, the weeds will take over very quickly. Great. Well, it sounds like you've covered a lot of things. What, how is the book laid out? Uh, do you um, cover, you know, how to set it up, how to then uh, practice, how, just kind of uh, what would one expect to see in your book? Well, certainly there's, it's Turf 101. You know, we're going to talk about mowing. We're going to talk about patterns in there also. We talk about specific grasses. So whether you're in the north, south, or east, or west, um, that you can care for it that way. We're going to talk about seeding in there and sodding. You know, it's really just going to cover everything a homeowner needs to do. And there's some great tips from colleagues that care for uh, uh, high-profiled areas across the United States, both in sports turf and out. Well, that's exciting. To, uh, what, what would be one of those examples of a little secret you might uh, find in there from the professional? Well, you know, there's tips in there from the White House groundskeeper, from uh, my colleague with the Chicago White Sox. There's a lot of fun tips in there that can help people relate to some of the fun challenges they have, too. Well, it sounds like a fun read just to learn about, you know, kind of get the inside scoop on these ballparks as well as just you know how to do it properly at home and I like your emphasis too on some of the cultural practices to avoid having to put on all the chemicals you can really save a lot of time and money and environment being a lot more sustainable just by the right culture absolutely I know I find too I'm glad you mentioned the height uh, and again that was about what for the home lawns it's two and a half to three and a half inches high and you also want to make sure that you have sharp mowing blades you know a lot of times you'll mow your grass and, and you may look out there two or three days later and it looks brown and if you go examine the grass blades they're all frayed at the top because your grass blades aren't sharp they've been hitting twigs dog toys acorns things like that 
your lawn and walnut. So you just want to make sure that you're sharpening those blades. And if you can't do it yourself, certainly go to the repair shop. They can do it. So you have uh, two different sets of blades you can put on there. Even once a month will make a big difference. That's why I've heard it's important because if you try it yourself and they're not a balanced and it goes around, that can really wreck your engine. So it's just a lot of tips like that that I'm sure they can find in your book again. So thanks so much for spending some time away from your uh, valuable turf grass here at Fenway uh, to talk a bit, little bit about your book. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. We want to thank David Meller and the Red Sox organization for hosting us at Fenway, and thanks to you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.